Okay. Let's everybody have our attention, please. I'm going to ask Chris to open our meeting with a prayer and also to thank him for our food. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just we thank you, Lord, for bringing us here together, Lord. We just thank you for your for your spirit, for your for all your the things you do to energize us. We just ask that you continue to provide us the the leadership we need and the energy we need and to fill our spirits and our hearts, Lord, to to do your work here, to bring this country, to bring the state, to bring the county all back in the presence of you. Lord, we just ask that you that you continue to to move us and to guide us and to lead us and bring new people with us. We just ask that you you let your light shine through us. Lord, we thank you for this food that you brought to us and the hands that have prepared it. And we ask you to bless it to our nourishment of our bodies and our bodies to your service. For in Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mr. Savage, yes. would you like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Now, most people know that... Uh, President Eisenhower added a phrase to the pledge in 1959, and it's a controversial pledge, but how many people know that Abraham Lincoln added this phrase to his notes in preparation for the Gettysburg Address under God? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, y'all can enjoy your <clears throat> nourishment, and uh, we'll kind of go ahead and start the meeting. Um, so just keep eating. You're not going to bother us. Um, the uh, We don't have a, a business agenda to report to you tonight. Um, Donnie's gone, and I'm filling in for him tonight. So we don't have a board meeting, any board meeting notes. <clears throat> I did want to tell you that uh, I was a delegate to the state convention. Everybody that was there, Pat was there, and Quita was there. Who else? Chris, y'all were there. Wasn't it a, wasn't it a great, it, to, well, to me, it was exciting. Because I've seen conventions on television back when they did them in the old days, in the in the 60s and 50s and 60s, and I remember the convention and all of that stuff. Nowadays, the the, the big um, presidential conventions are uh, all pretty much prescribed in advance. But this one wasn't for a lot of it, and there were there were really really great speeches. The governor and the lieutenant governor and the attorney general, Senator Cornyn, uh, Haley Barber, um, land commissioner. There were several of them that really impressed me. I'll tell you who impressed me the most was Greg Abbott. Amen. Amen. Wow. <clears throat> Greg Abbott impressed the dickens out of me. You know how some people, when they give a speech, maybe look at a teleprompter or something? This guy, he's in his wheelchair, sitting, they lowered the podium for him, and we were fortunate enough, our county was, uh, we were right almost on the front row. And so, he was, he was no more than from here to the back wall uh, from us. And you could just see the intensity in Greg Abbott's face and his eyes. I mean, he believed it. And I was just, he just really impressed me. Um, he talked about the, the lawsuits that he's preparing on behalf of the state of Texas uh, to help stop Obamacare, and he talked about the, um, the, um, the problems we're having with illegal immigration. And he said, now you people, you believe that, uh, that this is hurting the Hispanics. He said, actually, the, um, the Hispanics are, who are in America right now are being hurt worse by these, uh, these things that are going on, illegal activities that are going on. And he said, and my wife is a Latina, and she was standing right over there and, and came out beside him. And she, he said, my wife's father, my wife's brother, 
my uncles, her uncles, all of them served in this great country. They are just as much a Texan as any of you are. And all of this stuff that's going on with the illegal immigration is really hurting the Latinas, Latino citizens of our state and our nation. And he made his case very strong and, and proved it. John Cornyn had a great speech. I really liked his, his speech. Um, Patterson impressed the Dickens out of me too. He's the land commissioner. He's, a, he's not a, a one to take things sitting down. I think you don't want to get into a fist fight with him. He was, he was really, really impressive. Um, anybody else want to say uh, something that they noted about the convention that you wanted to? Anybody? Pat? Anybody? We had 14 places for people to go. On Friday night, we had 13 of them filled. On Saturday, we only had nine. But you know what? The last time I was there, I was it. And this time, you've heard some of these other people. If you'll listen to them and tell you what they, what they saw, what they heard, they're going to be back. And I'm so thankful. Thank you. You're welcome. And for those of you, you, you may not know, the way that you become a delegate is you go to the precinct convention at the primary. And if you miss that or your precinct didn't have a convention, Maybe you don't know who your precinct chairman is because some of our precincts don't have chairman. So if we, we need a precinct chairman in every precinct, for one thing, in Hopkins County, and then everybody needs to go. And this is, that's the grassroots level on how one is able to enter into uh, the convention um, uh, mode. Um, does anyone have any item of business you want to bring up before we start our program. Anything? No? Okay. Erwin, you want to come introduce our speaker? Thank you, John. Actually, there are two people that I need to introduce. Uh, let me quickly introduce my campaign manager. Many of you folks have not met. Uh, Ryan Malden is sitting right here uh, in front of the camera. That's where he needs to be, in front of the camera. Just a little quick background on Ryan. Uh, David Simpson recently uh, won the Republican primary down in House District. Was that seven? Seven in the Longview area. He unseated a pretty liberal Republican by the name of Tommy Merritt. It was considered what we call it the East Texas giant killing is what it was. And uh, Ryan was his manager. So we've got, we've got some experience and some, and some intellect uh, uh, and, a, and a good guy on the team. So if you hadn't had a chance to meet Ryan, please... Please meet him. I want to introduce somebody to you folks that is a very dangerous man to liberals in this state. Michael Quinn Sullivan is president and CEO of Empower Texans and its premier project, Texans for Fiscal Responsibility. He also serves as a, the treasurer, as I understand it. He is a fellow Aggie which uh, means that he gets double talking time. And um, th there was recently a quote in the uh, Fort Worth Star-Telegram that said that uh, Michael slays taxpayer dragons in Austin. When the heat is on in Austin, Michael Quinn Sullivan knows how to make it even hotter. Uh, he, he spent five years with the Texas uh, Public Policy Foundation before he took over the reins at Empower Texas. And I'll just tell you on a personal no note, the more that I get to know and talk to Michael, the more I respect and appreciate his incredible intellect and his, uh, and his, and his deep analysis uh, of the fiscal and social issues that are going on in Texas. You will not find a person who is more capable of articulating conservative values than the man you're about to hear. So without any further ado, Michael, come on up. Thank you. After uh, that kind introduction, I feel like I should sneak out the back door. Um, I will only at this point 
fail. Uh, but thank you very much, Mr. Kane. It's a real pleasure to uh, get to spend a little bit of time um, outside of the People's Republic of Austin. It's always kind of therapy to leave Travis County. So thank you for giving me the chance to not be there this evening. I used to feel guilty about uh, leaving town and traveling the state, leave my wife and kids at home. But then at some point, I you know kind of realized one, Nicole has a minivan; she can leave anytime she wants. Uh, two, uh, she is more proficient with our shrine to the Second Amendment than I am. So if anyone, you know, some bureaucrat or leftist walks up in our yard, may God have mercy upon their soul. Um, but for me, it's just therapeutic to to leave there. I never thought you could feel oppressed living somewhere until I lived in the People's Republic of Austin. So, uh, y'all, uh, so it's nice to be with people who are actually producing things and not think, taking things.